Hey, how you doing? Welcome back. I swear to God, I picked the hottest day of the year to do this. It's like 147 degrees in here. Just sweating. But it's an exciting day. I just received the Sony AX7000, and I'm going to install it into this Ultra Limited here. I also have the Biketronics BT2250 coming, and the 7.1 Pro 2 speakers. It's all going to get done all at the same time. Normally, I'd wait till the winter time to do a project like this, but uh, uh, I'm so unhappy with the Harley head unit, I just want to get it done. So we're going to do the whole thing all at once. Should take about a week. Uh, I have a day job, so I can't work on it full time. But we'll putt away on it. But uh, for now, i got to get some shorts on and uh, I'm going to do this outside where it's cooler. In the shade. So stick around. Now I watched the tutorial a couple of times before I took this thing apart. Uh, I wouldn't say I followed it exactly because everything seemed to be pretty straightforward. There was no curve balls at all. And it doesn't hurt to check it when you're putting it back together because it has to go back in a certain order. Just saying. Now you don't have to pull this harness right out of the way. I'm just doing it just cause. Get it out of the way. <laughs> Something to keep in mind is these rings, there's nothing really holding them on except the gauges, so once you take the gauges off, those things could fall right off. Now this really was as easy as it looked. The thing just popped right out of there. I've had this bike just over five years, and I've never once used that CB. So it's out of there. Over. These screws here, the ones that come with the kit are 3 8 and they are only meant to hold the original tray down, not any extra plates or poly or aluminum, whatever you're using to hold your amps down. Uh, you'll have to use your own screws. I'm using quarter inch steel stud screws. So I finished plugging this amp in and I run through the uh, initialization process for the hand controls with the boxes that came with the kit and it went flawlessly. Okay, so I got some new toys. This is the BT2250. 
That's uh, 250 watts per side. It's going to power just the front. That's right. Let's start. This is the Rockford Fosgate DSR-1. Uh, there are mixed reviews online about this thing, but it's the only eight channel output DSP that they make small enough to put on a motorcycle. So we're gonna give it a try. Now I bought into this. This is the aperiodic sound system by Biketronics. It's uh, fully metal, it's heavy duty. If you haven't seen my video on uh, baffles or enclosures, you can check it out here. <laughs> or here and what it does is it tricks a speaker into thinking that it's in a large sealed enclosure by using what's called aperiodic loading now what this does is it helps suppress the peaks and it smooths things out at the lower frequencies so it keeps the woofer under control tightens up the mid bass makes things a little punchier and uh, you got the open back to help keep the driver cool now, if you want to get the same results without spending big bucks, these are the boom mat speaker baffles that I installed in another video. I just cut the backs off them to help keep the drivers cool. But they work on the same principle of the aperiodic loading. As per instructions, one click. And there we go. Now these are built specifically for these 7.1 inch speakers. I'm not sure that they make anything for a 6.5. Right. Uh, another thing that drew me to these speakers is the fact that the crossover is built right onto the speaker. I love that idea. When you're fighting for every inch you can find under a fairing, getting rid of those little crossover boxes is absolutely amazing. I make a lot of my own cables. They're expensive to buy, but easy to make, so why not? And there we go. Somebody loves me. Anyways, uh, I popped off the vent because I wanted to see what was going on back here to make sure everything was cool with this amp. And then I realized that there was actually a place to put a zap strap down to the tray. So I zap strapped the back of the amp down to the tray. So now with that and the Velcro, it's not going anywhere. Um, also, you can see what I've done with the, uh, with the harness here. Uh, I, it's just... I popped uh, whatever this little thing's called. I just popped that one out and let it ride on top of the amp. Okay, still cleaning up wires. Uh, I made a change here with the DSP. I originally mounted it inside where the CB was, but for it to fit, uh, I had to have it on its side. And that put these output wires at the bottom, kind of pinched between the DSP itself and the bracket back here. Uh, I could see there being a potential problem there after a, a while of it vibrating. So I took it out and mounted it on the side of the bracket. It fits good. There's clearance. And uh, that gives me a room, room to <laughs> hide wires where the CB was. Uh, the next thing is to get this remote wire run to the back and uh, hook this one up. And then just continue to clean up wires. I should probably explain the amp configuration while I'm in here. The Biketronics Titan Power on the left is only powering the 7.1 inch speakers in the upper fairing. The Rockford Fuzzgate, there is, I said it right, is uh, <laughs> dialed down pretty good because it clips. Uh, I've got, it's powering four 80 watt 6.5 inch speakers, two in the lower fairing, two in the tour pack. Now in the bags, I have an amp in each bag. They're an audio control, one by 300. They're 300 at two ohms, 175 at four ohms. 
and they're each driving a 4 ohm 150 watt kicker 6x9. These sound really good. I'm, I'm really happy with this setup. And the whole reason why I'm updating the front end is because the back end was overpowering the front end when I was riding. And, uh, uh, well, you can't have that. So more power in the front. It's getting better. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's getting better. Speaking of cleaning, sometimes you just have to stop what you're doing and clean up the mess. And now we're on to the next phase. What I have to do is run a remote wire, which means adding a plug for the amps in the bags. The reason there isn't a remote wire already is that the amps in these bags have an auto sensing turn on at speaker level. But now I'm running the low level RCA input. And I don't know if the auto sensing isn't maybe in the low level circuit or if it's just not enough juice to kick the amp on. So I have to add a remote wire. No big deal. So here we go. All right, that went very well. I'm very happy. That's the second one, done. Now we just have to go work on the bike end. Okay, everything's plugged in. Time for the big test. And a solid green. Okay, and there you go. I've tested it out, sounds pretty good. And uh, the wiring, I mean, it looks a little bit stringy in the, in the video here, but uh, it's about as clean as it's gonna get. And uh, everything's secure. Triple tree's good. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll button her up and take her for a burn. Okay, one other thing. Uh, this fairing actually slopes in right here. So I had to zip tie these wires into the tray, uh, I don't know, inch or maybe two inches. Just tighten them right up. And once I did that, the fairing went on perfectly. Okay, the last thing I had to do is swap out this main fuse box here. It was a blade fuse, and I swapped it out for an ANL box. It's uh, 60 amp right now. We'll see how it does. 
Also, this uh, eight gauge, the math says that this eight gauge wire is gonna be okay, but I don't know. I might swap that to a four gauge. All right, let's put it together. And there we go. Pretty much ready to ride. All right, what better place to test out a bike stereo than on a, not exactly deserted road, but uh, right on the border. On that side of the ditch, it's America, and this side's Canada. So, the uh, beautiful thing about the Sony AX7000 is it comes with a remote. So let's see how far it reaches. 